Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Jason Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. Today, Father God, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time. Open up our hearts to receive your word. It's bread. It's manna. It's practical. We can use it this week. Lord, your word is also seed planted deep in the good soil of our hearts, produces life in us, grows us, changes us. Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Teach us what we need to know. Prepare us for what is coming in our lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. And welcome to the Living Word Bible Church Christmas Special, live from Mesa, Arizona. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With those bells jingle belling and everyone telling you, be of good cheer. Yeah, we're not going to do that. That'd be awful. Uh, no, praise God. We're going to have fun today, though. And, and instead, today we're going to talk about learning how to treasure the moments that happen in our lives. To take a breath. Have you ever heard the, the idea of stop and smell the roses? And life's moving by so fast. And I want to look at something that Mary did when she, of course, birthed the Messiah. Something that she did in her life. And the Bible mentions it in two places. It's an important passage for us today to really learning that when I stop and treasure the moments, that I'm building a life of happiness. I'm, I'm painting a world behind me of gratefulness, and I'm getting ready for what's coming up by adding strength and resolve to my future. And so let's go to Luke chapter 2 right now. And in the Bible, Mary has birthed the baby Jesus. He's in the manger. And the Bible says the angels came and visited shepherds who were in the field, and they made this declaration, the Messiah has been born. You will find a sign. This is your sign. He will be in a manger wrapped in swaddling cloth. So off these shepherds go, and they heard this declaration, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. So we see God has triggered something that is now happening on the planet and sends this message to the nativity scene. And here these shepherds come running in. They tell the story about what they just, we saw an angel, and this is what he said. And, and then the Bible says this in Luke chapter 2 and verse 19. But Mary treasured up all these things. Say treasured. She treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. So, so we, this is going to be in the Bible twice. We're going to get to the other one in a second. We, we get this characteristic, this mechanism that, that Mary's put into place into her life. That she stops... And she breathes in that moment, and she looks for the treasure, right? We get the idea that Mary's like, hmm. Kind of in a world where our attention span is about the equivalent of a two-year-old, right? Like, right, we're just going through our feed. Man, that TikTok video was long. What was that, like 20 seconds? I was bored out of my mind, right? We're just... We almost do this with people sometimes. You're like, yeah, we're, speed along, man. We're just swiping up on the people we're talking. We swipe up on our moments, and Mary's teaching us something about, can you just relax for a second? Breathe this in. You know, Mary would have known she just had a limited time with Jesus. Like, she knows it's the Messiah. She knows that she's raising the Lamb of God for the slaughter. She knows this. This is not news to her. And so she's going, this... Every moment that goes by, I'm going to treasure it. I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to think about this. Logging into my... I can't take pictures right now. I can't do a video of the shepherds running in, and I can go back and visit it later. No, no, I'm going to log this in my emotional memory for eternity. I'm I'm logging it. I'm treasuring this. What just happened here? Satan wants us to miss the moments. He wants us just to fumble through this life real quick and miss it because we don't look back on our our lives and have the happy memories that propel us into a strong future when I go through life without cherishing the memories and the moments that I have, right? I have kids and they were born and yesterday they were this big and I blinked and now they're, bye dad, getting married. Where'd you go? What happened? And people told me that it was going to go by fast, but I had no idea. 
And Mary, was, she's like, this is, I don't have forever with, this, with, with my son, Jesus. I don't have forever with him. So I'm going to take and treasure these moments. I, I remember uh, being up with the kids late at night, you know. You have to work in the morning, and then you got this crying baby, and it's got the flu or something, and it's two in the morning, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I have to get some sleep. What am I going to do? And, you know, I always had the flu duty. That was my job, right? <laughs> if there's a kid that was up with the, you know, running nose, that was me. I, I got the flu. My wife did the poopy diapers. I did flu duty. And no, it's true. I never changed a poopy diaper because I don't, there's certain things I don't do in life, and I won't compromise. I don't, I don't put my hands around poop, and I don't eat cheese, uh, uh, sorry, carrot cake. So you guys know that about me. And so there it was, though, flu duty. And here's what I can tell you for sure. That now that, the, that my youngest is 14, that those nights that I used to dread and complain about, I want to go back. And I want to treat that moment differently than I did. I want to be up at 2 in the morning with the crying baby again because it went by too fast. And Mary's teaching us something about life right now, to take time to treasure the moments. And Christmas season can come and go so fast. We just started Christmas, like, right, yesterday, and then now it's over. It's the 26th. Where'd it go? I don't know. Some of you guys are like, I'm gone. It's over. Not everybody loves Christmas. I love Christmas. We're the Christmas lovers. We're here, right? We love our... I love I love it. It's a very romantic time of the year. Well. But there's things to not like about Christmas. We could all look at the things that are annoying about Christmas. The, the shopping. And if I got to go shop... Men, men, we don't typically like shopping. But if I have to do it, I've learned how to enjoy it. So this is just me. I've reprogrammed myself to go... Well, I'm, I, my wife's like, we got to go Christmas shopping. Why complain? It's not going to change anything, so I just go, okay. So I figure out how to have fun. So I have fun Christmas shopping. I, I do things. I, one of the things I love to do is that when my wife goes back to the dressing room and we're shopping for, like, maybe something for her for Christmas, I start to send clothes back through the employees that she would never wear. That's funny for me. Like, it's a leather miniskirt and a, a bikini top. Hey, send this back to her. <laughs> no, she's going to love it. Send it back, yeah. Jason! <laughs> she's screaming. I like to go, the cashiers, they always ask for your phone number now. This is the thing that they do, right? When you walk up and you're about to buy something, they ask for your phone number. I love that. I think it's fun. I have fun with it. I just walk up and I, sir, can I have your phone number? I go, <laughs> and I'm flattered. I am, but I'm, I'm married. That's my wife. Right there, that's my wife. And you just see them get flustered. Oh my gosh, these girls, they get so flustered. No, 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 no. No, no, it's just for the company. Sure. Yeah, for the company. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, I find ways to enjoy uh, shopping. And I was, I was, you know, even in the parking lots, where I was pulling in the parking lot. I always pray for a good spot, and, and there was a spot pretty close. And so I, I started heading towards that parking lot and that spot. And I turned my direction light on because, you know, somebody was pulling out. And, and that's how you mark it. You know, you guys know the drill, right? That's proper parking etiquette. Is if, once that direction light's on, that's a claim. That's my spot. But somebody comes in, like, facing me now. I've clearly got the spot marked. And, and I see these two younger girls, and they're, like, pointing at the spot. And I was like, no, no, no. That's my spot. And they were like, no. We're going to take that spot. And I was like, I'm going to call your parents. <laughs> like, that's, you're not following proper etiquette. And, and so, but the person that backed out, backed out, and as they were backing out, they pulled towards me, which blocked me from taking and they whipped right in and took my spot. Then they got out and began to do a victory dance. They're like, this really, I was like, what? You're kidding me. But I, I started laughing, because it was funny. I was like, that is funny. The victory dance is a funny move. And then four spaces up, maybe five, another car starts backing out. I drive past them, pull in that spot, and I'm just thinking to myself, it's the hap happiest season of all. That was my singing. I'm all done. I really won't sing anymore. I apologize to those people, especially my wife. She's like, please don't ever sing again. The, in the same chapter is this story where, where Jesus uh, and his whole family go up to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And Jesus is 12 years old in this story. And the, the Bible says that when Mary and Joseph left after the feast was over, they uh, realized that at the end of the day, they'd been gone for an entire day, that Jesus was missing. They didn't have him. Now, it's going to be a total of three days before they find him. So, you know, I feel like if, you know, if you're, if you're in charge of the Messiah, you know what I mean? 
Like, hey, here's the Messiah. Can you take care of him for a little while? You should maybe have a check sheet. Like, there should be protocols in place for when you're leaving on a long trip. You should not lose the Messiah. This is important stuff. And, and here's the thing. I can remember very two vivid times where I lost one of my children. I lost Christian twice. I did. No, I lost him. He was gone for, like, less than an hour. It was, it was a McDonald's Playland was one of them. He went up into the Playland. He was, like, two years old. I couldn't find him. He was gone. I, I, I literally was having such a panic attack that I ran into the parking lot screaming his name, thinking somebody had taken him and grabbed him. And he wasn't in the playland. I went back a second time through all the pipes and found him. Praise God. But here's what I can tell you for sure. It was traumatic. I can remember that moment vividly because I lost one of our children. Trauma. Say trauma. Okay, so we laugh about her losing the baby Jesus, but reality is... She can't go make a flyer. She can't call 911. She's lost her son. And she's traveled a day away from the city. She's got to go back to the city looking for him. And then she spends a total of three days without finding him, finds him on the third day. So, so trauma. This is a traumatic time for her. And, and so we're going to go and pick up in Luke chapter 2. Right after she finds him, she's like, Jesus, oh my gosh, where were you? And it says in verse 49, he says, Why were you searching for me? He asked, Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Like, didn't you know where I'd be? And it says, But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them. He was obedient to them. But his mother, watch this, treasured all these things in her heart. So, so after this happens, trauma. She's like, okay, wow. And she's playing it out in her mind. We laughed, and then we looked, and I was, I was panicked. And she's just rolling it through her head again. But what's interesting is, is the word treasured. She was looking for treasure in trauma. That's a secret. There's treasure in there. It felt traumatic, but we found him. For her, maybe that was the, tra- the, the treasure, and, I, and maybe the words that he said. Maybe she's... It says that she treasured all these things. All these things that she treasured. So it wasn't just what just happened, because it's, it's, it's plural. It wasn't she treasured this thing. that just She treasured this story. No, no, she's treasured all these things. So she goes to the story in her mind, and instead of painting herself as a victim of trauma, she finds a way to find victory in what looked like trauma. Because here's the reality in this life. We cannot trust that trauma will never happen, but we can trust that when trauma does come, we'll be able to stand strong as people of faith in God. Come on, somebody. Because she knows this is not the last time she's going to face trauma. She knows she's going to have to face the, the, the her, she's raising the, the lamb of God for slaughter. She knows that. She knows her time's limited. And, and when it says all these things, she, was, she wasn't just treasuring this moment. She was going back in her mind to all the moments she had with Christ. Right? Remember, remember when he was born? Remember when the angel came to me? Remember when the shepherd showed up? Remember when the wise man showed up and, and, and brought all this money and, and financed everything? But I also remember when King Herod targeted my baby my newborn, for death. That king Herod decided to kill baby Jesus because he heard another king had been born. And then she would remember that my husband woke up in the middle of the night with a dream to get out of town and run to a different country so that my baby doesn't die. Imagine Mary's experience, sound asleep. Wake up, honey, pack a couple of things. We are running because the king wants to kill our child trauma. She takes trauma and she finds treasure. And she shows us there is a secret in here that in every moment that I go through, I can grab a paintbrush and I can paint my journey and I can either be a victim of the circumstance or I can find the victory in what happened to me. Come on, somebody. 
and I can retell the story of what happened so that I'm not carrying discouragement, frustration, and fear, but instead I'm carrying the idea that I am in the palm of the God of this universe's hand, and he is directing my steps. There was a woman that was in the church. Um, she, she works here, and, and uh, she was meeting with me and a group of us, and we were meeting about the, the finance stuff, and, and, but then suddenly she got a phone call. She, she's running out of the building. I said, where are you going? She said, I just got a call from the school. My uh, third grader, my child, daughter, is, was choking, and now they've called the paramedics, and so I'm headed there. That's all I knew. She comes back a few hours later. I said, what's going on with your daughter? She said, oh, she's fine. Paramedics got there. Everything's fine. Uh, you know, but she had all this anxiety and fear, and well, I don't want to put emotions on her, but you could see that it was, a tra- it was trauma. Of course, it would be for anyone. But then I said to her, look at me. I said, you won. This is a win. Because here's what we have for sure, is that the, when the enemy comes, we have evidence that God has your children in his hand. Do you see that? I got out of a paintbrush and I started painting a different story. We just turned her, her attitude around. When I was a young man, a young boy, I was eight years old, seven, nine years old, ten years old, my, my dad would sometimes wake me up at three in the morning on a Saturday, uh, maybe four in the morning on a Saturday, my father, Dr. Tom Anderson, uh, to go up to Prescott where we would pan for gold in the dead of winter. Now you have to remember that when you're an eight-year-old and, and it's a Saturday, you don't have school. So there's a lot of things you might want to do with that Saturday, but one of them is not to go with, to be woken up at three or four in the morning and go gold panning in the ice. And so, but we would do this, and my dad's car typically didn't have heat, so you'd freeze all the way there, me and my brother just huddling in the back, wanting to start a fire on the seat. And then we'd get there, and then the icy cold water, and there'd be snow on the ground a lot of times. I remember times where it was just ice everywhere. And, and then you try and walk on the, the rocks as long as you can, but then your, your little yellow front shoes at some point are going to slip down into the water. And you are just cold, and then your dad slops some mud on your pan, and you're panning for gold, and this is your Saturday. But even though as an eight-year-old that was a miserable moment, when I think back now as a man that's turning 50 in a few days, I look back now and I remember treasure because that was a day that my dad took me painting for gold. That was a memory, and it's funny how we can repaint the memory just as a treasured moment. I got to spend the day with my dad, and we're not always gonna have these people around us, and we're not always gonna be here. We have moments of time that we can figure out, and as he would plop that lump of coal, uh, I'm sorry, coal, the clay, that lump of clay on my pan, when you pan for gold, you gotta get your, your fingers down in that cold water, and you got to swirl that pan around like this. And what you're doing is you're, you're causing the heavier, weightier stuff in that clay to settle down into the pan. And if you take your time and you're really careful, you can slowly slough off the lighter stuff that's not valuable to just kind of fade off into the stream. As you keep doing it, if you do it long enough, taking your time, can't be in a rush, you'll slowly get to the bottom of that clay where... All that's left in the pan is this black sand. It's really iron that's been oxidized. And if you keep, once you get to that black sand, if you just keep carefully sloughing that iron off to the top, what's underneath that iron can be the weightier gold. And if you're careful and you're watching it, you'll see those little gold flecks underneath the black sand start to appear in that black sand. That gold's in there. And I I think a lot of times, we get a memory, an event that happens in our life that's kind of a lump of mud. But like Mary, what we can do is we can become treasure hunters. And we can look at that memory, that lump of mud, and we can refine it, and we can sift it, and we can dig around long enough, we will find that there's gold somewhere in there. There's something that's gonna give me strength. There's a victory in the middle of what looked like a defeat. What I'm doing is I'm trying to, I'm trying to muddle through the mud to find the success, to find Jesus in there. That's what she was doing. She was meditating on the treasure of Jesus Christ. Can I find that lump, that nugget of gold in the middle of this mess? I know it's in there, but I might have to dig for it. I might have to slowly take my time and refine to find the treasure. It takes pondering and meditation to do this kind of thing. It takes thinking about the same thing for a long time. And that's what 
really what Mary is teaching us right now. The Bible says that if I was seek, I will find. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Seek, and you will find. It doesn't say what I seek. It just says whatever you seek, you're going to find it. If you're looking for discouragement in a memory, you can find one. If you're looking for to be a victim of that memory, you can find that. You could decide to write yourself as the victim of your entire life. This happened to me and that happened to me. Mary could have wrote herself as the victim of her life, but she chose, I'm not going to be a victim of this life. I'm going to write myself differently. I'm going to write that memory differently than what happened. I'm going to choose to find the treasure in the middle of that trauma. Can I get somebody to say amen? amen. It's so easy if you want to find a, a problem in your marriage. <laughs> if you want to make yourself mad at your husband, ladies, it's very easy. You just have to seek for the wrong things for just a little bit. Almost immediately, you'll find all kinds of things to be mad at him about. And you fellas out the same way. We could be mad at our wives about things. Just take a moment to think about the things that bother you. And within a few minutes, you could be all stirred up. You could do this with your brother, with your sister, with your mom, your dad, your children. You can stir yourself up about the wrong things because whatever you seek, you will find. And if you want to find happiness in this life, what I'm saying to you this morning is let's imitate Mary and let's stop seeking the, the mud and let's start seeking for the treasure. Let's start looking for treasure in every moment and every event. Let's look for treasure in each other. Can I find treasure in you? Sure, I know there's clay on the outside, but the Bible tells me there's treasure on the inside. And you live in a world where not a lot of people are going to be looking for treasure. But if you'll be a treasure hunter in others, you'll find you'll live a happier life, a more successful life. And you gain a strength and resolve for the things that are still ahead of you. Because when Mary faced trauma, watch this now. Watch this. She knew this was coming, Mary. She knew. We talk about Father God giving his only son. That was, it's huge. It's huge. Father God gives his only son. But Mary didn't really get a choice in the matter. This was an assignment for her life. You're going to birth the Messiah. It'll be your son. And you're gonna, he's going to die for the sins of man. It's a, it's a happy outcome, but you're going to go through a tough time. I want to show you this to you. And, at the cross, Matt, John chapter 19. Jesus up on the cross. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. I, wanted, I want you to just bear out the significance of that. There's nothing more painful that a woman could ever go through than to watch her son die. And there she is doing it. She's at the foot of the cross. Not, not a lot of the disciples were there. Only one disciple made it. Big, strong, tough men couldn't face it. And if, if, if you were Jesus, and we, we have him in us, but the idea that somebody was facing a tough time, one of the things you might want to be there would be your mom. You know what I mean? I want my mom there, what Jesus was facing. And sure enough, that's where she was. Jesus could look down. He even looked down and said, John, behold your mother, mother, your son, to, to the disciple John. Because she had learned this principle, that any time trauma came, she found treasure, that when she was facing that trauma, she was already resolved and strengthened to know that I trust God, and even in this circumstance, this trauma is going to become treasure, and I'm not moving. And sometimes we're going to face trauma, but can we be people like Mary that are just immovable? The way we get there is learn how to do it now. Learn how to treasure every single moment. Treasure the defeats. Treasure the victories. Treasure the good times. Treasure the bad times. Treasure the betrayal. Treasure the gifts. Treasure the love. Treasure the hate. Can I learn to find treasure in everything around me and everything that happens? Because I'm developing a strength that causes me to be able to face the next trauma in my future and know this may look difficult what I'm facing. Seeing, the, seeing what she was seeing would have been difficult. This may look difficult, but I trust God that even in this moment, He will turn this around for my good. I'm choosing to find the treasure in the middle of trauma in Jesus' name. Give the Lord some praise right now. Let me ask you a question. If you were to face eternity today, do you know what eternity looks like for you?
And would you have peace with Father God? Here's the good news. God has already offered the free gift of salvation to anyone who would put their faith in His Son, Jesus. And if you're ready for that kind of life, stepping into a new life and out of an old life, then pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, forgive me of sin. And Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're the Son of God who died for sin and rose from the dead. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guess what? You just stepped into eternal life. Get involved in a good Bible-believing church. God bless you. 